Today I'm going to do some NPC AI, specifically pathfinding, and it's pretty complete too. I have pathfinding links for climbing, and we're going to react to a slammed door. The doors are going to shut when we hit this pad. Then he's going to recompute. He's got to swim across this pool and get that gold, right? So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Hit the play button. Five seconds after we start the game, you should start running. And keep an eye on the dummy. There he goes. Up the ladder. Nice. Ah, oh, door. Bra. Then he goes up another ladder. Jump. Over that little blue thing. Jumps again. And we got our little pool. In the pool. Start swimming. Boom. He got it. Got the treasure. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started with that. All right. I got my empty base plate right here. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is get a rig. Get some sort of NPC. So go to Avatar, Rig Builder. I'm going to use R15. Pathfinding doesn't care if it's R6 or R15. R15, Man Rig. There he is. And I'm going to unanchor his humanoid root part so he moves around. Open that up. We're going to go down to the humanoid root part of the dummy. Scroll down to where it says Anchored. Uncheck. Cool. Let's go back. Back to the dummy, maybe rename him. I, don't know, I, I like I like Ralph for AI stuff, Ralph. And then we need to add body colors so it don't get banned because that's some weird Roblox thing. Body colors. You can put clothes on them too. Either one. It just can't be all one color. Uh, what else? Let's go ahead and get the animate stuff from our player and put him on Ralph so he runs around like a regular player, right? So there's my player in the game. I'm gonna go to the workspace. I'm going to open that up, Simtech Gamer 7, open that up. I'm going to get the animate. There it is. See that little computer? It's a local script. Animate. We're going to right click. We're going to copy. Now you have to turn the game off in order to paste it into Ralph, right? It also won't save. So there's Ralph. Right click, paste into, boom, he's got my animate stuff. But we need to make this a server script because he's a server entity. He's not a player. We can't use a local script on Ralph. So hit the plus sign on Ralph. Script. There we go. Let's go ahead and say animate. And I'll transfer everything from this animate into my animate. So get that top value there. Shift click that bottom. Everything in here is under the animate script from my player. I'm going to drag it into my new animate script right here. So computer, that's not what we want. Just a little script, that's what we want. Now I need to get the code in my animate, right? The little computer one, the one I got from my player. There it is, animate. I'm gonna do a control A to select all, control C to copy all. I'm gonna go to my script that I just added, the server script, control V, paste it, 800 lines of code, boom, right? We can get rid of our local script, the computer one. Don't delete the wrong one. There we go. And now we have ours that we just created. Let's scroll up a little bit. And this uh, setup emote chat hook, this can cause some errors in the output window sometimes because it's uh, this is kind of a player thing. So we'll just delete that. Uh, right now it's line 748 to line 760, but that changes a little bit depending on updates. Boom, we don't need it. Cool. Now we are good to go. We have an NPC that we can start doing pathfinding with. All right, let's get some walls and some treasure. And I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me make walls. So in the toolbox, I saved off the one from the demo. What is this? Obby for pathfinding. That's what I want. There we go. Oh, Ralph's inside. Let me just go ahead and move him a little bit. Hit the turn the collisions off in case it gets stuck. There we go. And I'll get this... Uh, base or what do you call it the spawn location out of the way and we're going to need treasure too all right so we'll grab a part boom treasure let's go ahead and rename it so we can find it in our script treasure i'll make it yellow easy to see cool and now let's get started with our scripting let's go over to ralph where are you at right in here and we'll click on them, hit the plus, add a script, and let's call this script Pathfinding. All right, now Pathfinding, 
we're going to need the pathfinding service. So in the script, local PFS pathfinding service game get service pathfinding service. That's our first variable PFS pathfinding service. We are going to need a waypoint table. So waypoints are the little points in between your start position and your goal. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do an empty table there. So that's an open close uh, curly brackets so that we initialize our table. And now we're going to need a path. So we get the path from the pathfinding service. So PFS, and then we'll do create path and no parameters, just empty parentheses. I'm going to need a WP IDX. That's my waypoint index, which point in between our start and our end location are we on? And we're going to start out at the first point. Probably could have guessed that. Now I need a variable for my character. I have a script dot parent that gets me the character. I'm going to need the humanoid. So local, I'll call that hum. And that is in the character. We'll do a wait for child humanoid. The humanoid is for the move to. I'm going to need the humanoid root part for the position of the character. So char, wait for child, humanoid root part. And what else? Oh, the treasure. Might as well. Might as well do a variable for the treasure. So we'll say treasure equals, and I just put it in the workspace. Workspace treasure. Nice. Now let's get a, uh, let's get a function for follow path. So we have local function follow path and we're going to have a goal that gets passed in. We're going to get our path and then we're going to compute async from our start position, which is a humanoid root part, start position to our, to our goal, which in this case is treasure. But right now the variable is goal position. And with that compute async, we are going to get waypoints if we have a successful computation between the start and the goal. So I'm going to get my waypoint table and I'm going to, I'm going to make it empty. I'm going to initialize it just in case there's old waypoints from the last time we did a comp, a compute. And then if this isn't successful, we don't want waypoints floating around in that table. So let's check to see if the path status equals equals enum path status success. If it does, we have valid waypoints between our start and our goal position. So we're going to do WPS path, and then I'll do a get uh, capital W waypoints. We will initialize our waypoint index to one again. So WP, WP IDX equals one. And then we'll get the humanoid colon move to the first waypoint in the waypoint list. So we have it in the WPS table. We're going to do an open close square brackets inside there. We're going to do our WP index to tell which waypoint in that table we're going to starting at one. And we'll just do the position here because we don't really want the waypoint. We want the position, but the waypoint has other information like the action, like whether he's jumping or running or swimming, stuff like that. So that looks good. Our follow path is, is good. What we need here is a Hume move to finished event that we're going to capture when we get to our point. So when we get the humanoid move to, we fire that off. This event's going to trigger when we either get to our point or we time out. So the move to is finished. How do we know if we got to the point or we timed out? Well, we'll put an anonymous function here and we're going to get a variable called reached. It will be true if we got to the point, it'll be false if we timed out. So if reached and WP index is actually less than the number of waypoints in the table, then we need to keep going. We got to our point. We have more points to go. Let's go ahead and say WP index plus equals one. We're going to go to the next index 
And then we're going to say if WPS WP index dot action equals equals enum waypoint action dot jump, then let's make sure we're jumping. Basically, what we're going to do, we're going to check for any jumps that we need in between our waypoints. If we do need to jump, we'll do a dot jump equals true. Oh my gosh, there we go. Equals true. And we can do a move to. Where is it at? Oh, I need a colon, sorry. Move to. And we're gonna do the we're gonna move to that same waypoint. We're just making sure we don't need to jump while we're getting there. If we do, go ahead and jump while we're getting there. So I'm going to put that waypoint in here, the same one that we checked the jump for, and I'm going to get the position. There we go. What else do we need? We're technically good. The only thing we have to watch is if the path is blocked in between where we compute the waypoints for the start and stop position and before we actually get to the stop position. So if something blocks our path dynamically, a log falls in the way, we're going to get an event that fired. Path is going to fire a blocked event if something blocks the path. It doesn't matter if it's in front of the NPC or behind it. Blocked will fire if something blocks its path. So we are going to have to check to make sure we only care about things that are in front of our NPC. So we're going to connect to a function, an anonymous function, and let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to get the uh, waypoint where the blockage occurred. So we'll say blocked WP IDX. We're going to check to see if the blocked waypoint index is actually greater than our waypoint index that we're on. That's all we care about. We don't care about the ones that happen behind us. We only care about the ones in front. If that happens, we need to recompute our path. So follow waypoint, and then I'm going to pass in the treasure variable again. Let's go ahead and make a call to get this thing going. I'll do the follow path to the treasure. This is going to be the first thing that fires. We're going to go all the way down here. We're going to say, oh, function, save that for later. Event, save that for later. Event, save that for later. Oh, we can fire this event. Ooh, let's wait five seconds before we get in the game, though, because we want to see we want to see what's going on. Yeah, let's hit the play. We should be running around in five seconds. There's Ralph. Oh, look at that! Ralph's running around. Boo! But he is doing it, so he's going to his treasure. He's just not going the route that we thought. We forgot to put a little. Uh, we forgot to put a little. Um, doorway here so he couldn't get out so he had to go through the maze let's go ahead and do that also i want to do climbing now so climbing is actually a lot easier than what you might think this code is done we don't need to do any more with the code we can do more with the code but it's sufficient what we need to get him to climb let's go ahead and grab a wall here what's this wall alt click We'll do a duplicate, make sure collisions are off. Control D, let's drag this back. And now he can't get out. Cool. And then we'll add another blockage right here. All right, we'll just go ahead and scale it. And I'm gonna put a ladder in here. And I have a ladder in my toolbox. I'll put a link to that too. It's not very exciting. All oh, right, I gotta go to the website. So go to the browser. I'll put this link in the description if you want the ladder. It's just a ladder. We'll do get, get now, come back here. There it is, simple ladder, pour that in. Collisions, move. Now, if we play this, the ladder should not work. Let's make sure, because we need to do something called a pathfinding link. Oh man, I can't see. Here we go. So he can't compute the path. That's why he's just standing there. We didn't do we didn't do any messages for that. There's no error. But if you wanted to do a message for failure to compute a path, 
you go to your pathfinding and then right here if the status was not a success let's do that else print no path found boom he's mad about it it's like bruh oh i should have put that in there bruh no path found let's take a look no path found well we can fix that what we need is a pathfinding link so i'm going to go here to the bottom rung of this ladder i'm going to do a alt click i got bot step i'm going to add an attachment attachment there we go now let's go ahead and move that attachment home move i'm going to move now I need to add an attachment to the end of my climb. It's going to be this step. Alt, click. And that's top step. I'll hit the plus. A for attachment. And then I'm going to move the attachment. Make sure it gets over to here. Now on the either the top or the bottom step, it doesn't really matter. We're going to put, hit the plus a pathfinding link and this is the key now if you name these you can get these on the waypoint under the dot label tag so i'm just going to leave them like this because this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial but on this pathfinding link now what we got to do is get our zero attachment and we can make it this one attachment make it that it's not going to matter see there's arrows both ways because i have something called bi-directional checked so you can make this a unidirectional path where it just goes one way we have it bi-directional all right let's go ahead and play now we should be able to get a path and climb up that ladder that's pretty cool let's make sure we see it there he goes and he's up look at that look at that he's tricky now he's just going to run down to the side that's why i had those blockages in the demo and you might be thinking hey how do i get him to swim well the good news is i thought i was going to have to do a pathfinding link for that they can swim by themselves if he jumps into that if he jumps into the water he's going to follow the waypoints to the treasure even through the water so you're pretty good to go all right, one last thing that we have to check, and that is if there's a blockage in the path. He computed a path, he's running the path, now there's a blockage, and he can recompute a new one. Can he recover? Can he do that? So I just have this right here, this blocked wall with trigger that I made and uploaded it. I'll put the link in the description. It's just for testing, but let's take a look notice i had to move the walls up a little bit because he was tricky and he's getting up there and he should start coming up over that ladder any second if he hits oh look at that try to get the other wall if he hits this pressure plate right here a door is going to pop up ah and then we put another ladder there that he can climb over it's not the preferred choice but he did recover from the blockage that's pretty cool all right, I will see you in the next video.